So let's take our Bibles, please, and turn to John 13. John 13, we're not in a series right now. In fact, uh, we came out of our Christmas series, and, and uh, we'll start something real soon. But uh, tonight, again, an unusual night. When Christmas and New Year's falls on Sunday, um, it makes it kind of an unusual travel time. You actually get two shots at it. We used to have a lot of staff gone and their families as well. And uh, so you got about two weeks to work that thing through. And so we're working through this. School doesn't start until the 8th. <clears throat> so our teenagers are in here, and our, our kids' program has not started till next week. So all that will be full full uh, blown next next week and everything roll under long and so I'm glad you're here tonight it's so good to have guests with us we're so thankful for you and uh, John 13 um, I just want to I want to do something I think family wise church family wise that's my intention tonight and so let's read the word of God together let's stand please John 13 we'll read two verses of something Jesus said very very important words he says in John uh, chapter 13 and let's look please at verse 34 verse 34 let's go ahead and read verse 33 little children yet a little while i'm with you ye shall seek me and as i said unto the jews whether i go ye cannot come so now i say unto you a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another as i have loved you that ye also love one another but this shall by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if ye have love one to another I thought about that phrase, <clears throat> one another, and I chased it down through the Bible, and I've got more than I can preach on tonight. I'll share six thoughts with you on that phrase tonight, one another, and I'll talk about that. And when I talk about it, I'm going to talk about the family of God. I'm going to talk about our marriages. I'm going to talk about our families. How many of you thank God for being able to be around family over Christmas? Amen. What a wonderful time. That's, that's, I guess that's the fun part of being around family, and uh I want to talk about those two words tonight, one another. Father, bless now, please, as we consider this truth, we ask you to encourage us from the Word of God tonight, we pray, please, and help us as a church family to uh, be uh, understanding of the importance of the fellowship we have with each other, and we should do all we can to keep that from being broken by misdeed or hurt or harm, that we do all we can to keep the body Christ together. We thank you for your love, unreserved love for us. And I pray you'll teach us from thy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. <clears throat> I'm still nursing a vo my voice somewhat, but it's getting stronger, and I'm thankful for that. So I like to belt this out. You all are used to 20, 25 minute messages over Christmas, and I'm sick of it. I'll just tell you that right now. So you better pack a lunch Sunday is the only thing I can say. If I, my voice is better Sunday, we'll just unload the whole truck. But isn't it, isn't it a blessing and a joy to be saved? And I guess that's just a wonderful thing of knowing you're going to heaven, but just being part of God's blood-washed family. And uh, tonight I want you to understand that we call each other brother and sister because we are related by blood. You got that, right? Maybe you don't feel comfortable using that word brother or sister, or whatever, uh, but um, I guess we really don't know how much it means to all of us uh, to, uh, to be in the family of God, and this thing called the family of God, the church, is a beautiful plan. We sing that song, I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God, join heirs with Jesus, and uh, I love that song, and if anybody in this world ought to love each other and get along, it should be God's people. I suppose one of the biggest misunderstandings we have about uh, the Christian life is thinking we can just kind of get along all by ourselves, uh, kind of isolate ourselves, and that's not in God's plan, or think that we can uh, love God and get along with God and not get along with each other. That's impossible as well. Uh, God says if you love God, uh, you can't hate your brother, 1 John 3.10. And uh, then here, the Bible says you and I are ever going to make an impact on this world, we're going to have to get along with each other. Twelve times in the New Testament we are commanded <clears throat> to love one another. <coughs> That's twelve times one per month, you might say. Several other places in Scripture it tells us how we should treat each other. And so that's what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to key off that phrase, one another. I want you to just kind of jot down three words just by way of introduction from our text tonight. He says here, first of all, he says that we're to love one another. 
And as he says this, notice, please, it's a commandment to obey. Would you jot that down, please? Just three quick words here. It's a commandment to obey. To obey. Secondly, in our context, we understand it is a custom. In other words, this should be an habitual lifestyle. We should always be doing this. Look how, the, how it's put together. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and that ye also love one another. That phrase is repeated twice so that we understand that it is unreservedly uh, a, c- a command that should be continued, not just given one time. So it should be customary for God's people to love one another, a family of God. But then thirdly, understand that here's the confirmation. The confirmation is this. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have loved one to another. So in other words, if, if an unsaved person walks inside this congregation or uh, uh, somebody from, from another uh, area comes in, like we have a lot of, we have, we have guests tonight, they should be able to hear, to tell by our singing, by our fellowship, before and after church, by how we treat each other, that we love each other and uh, that we love one another. That's my first point. If you'll jot that down, number one, let me give you six tonight. I've got 20, but let me give you six if I could do that. If we just kind of key off that phrase, if you punch it in your computer, one another, in the New Testament, you'll find several. First of all, right here in verse 34, love one another. He tells us how, as I have loved you. That's uh, Christ-like love. Now, Christ loves us with agape love. In other words, God-like love, perfect love. And you say, well, I can never love other people like that. And you know, you're humanly speaking, you're right. But that is our goal. Our goal is to love like God. And I want to challenge you that for the rest of your life, understand that you should intentionally love other people as God would love you, as God does love us. Often we can become mechanical. We can forget that we're surrounded by people uh, who need our love, who Christ uh, has exhibited his love to them, and, and they don't, we can be the only Christ they're ever going to see. And so as you walk into maybe uh, the barber shop or maybe uh, some other setting that you are kind and loving around those, those people that you're around, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have loved one for another. And so every time we have a spat, every time there's a disagreement, whatever, we're really going backwards in our testimony or how it's confirming when someone comes in that we are certainly uh, born again people. So number one, I'll zip these quickly. Number one, we should love one another. Number two, won't you, by the way, if you, you don't mind walking through the Bible because I'm going to do it tonight, okay? So if I get lost trying to find a scripture verse, we'll all get lost together. But would you do this with me? I'll try to stay in order if I could. Let's turn to second, or excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25. Now, this always scares me when I do this because I hardly ever do it. But uh, when I get over there, it's not the right verse, and we're all just in a heap of trouble. And I'm up here stammering and stuttering around. What in the world am I talking about? So we're going to get over here to chapter 12 of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to look at verse 25, if you would. Chapter 12, verse 25. I, lo- I love this right here. And uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 25, it says... Uh, that there should be no schism, that word means uh, any type of division, that there be no schism in the body, and that, and that the members should have the same care one for another. And then he tells us what he means by that. Whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. I notice how you all you just gl- lit up and, and glowed when we sang happy birthday to one of our deacons. I thought that was just a special time. Brother JP, they love you here, you and Miss Cherry. And uh, it was very obvious tonight. And uh, we probably should have went and had a party for you, I reckon. But anyhow. But the same is true when people hurt. When people hurt. That's why I, I encourage you to come when we have funeral services. You, you, don't, you maybe not know them. But we want you to come. And, and just it's an encouragement to see people come through. Notice he says here that there be no schism. Or in other words, no, no division. Anytime that uh, divisiveness is allowed to enter the church then there's all type of hurt, and, uh, and pe- people don't understand that. And it just really throws cold water on a ministry. You know, you and I ought to do all we can to keep from allowing uh, divisiveness to come inside the church. It's all of our jobs. And so number one, we should love one another. Number two, we should care one for another. I mean, uh, if one member suffers, all members suffers. It means that uh, we're to take care of each other like we're a family. Uh, we... Uh, 
we, we often miss, miss this. We try our best not to ever miss, but sometimes we'll miss if somebody, you know, son, if you're in a Sunday school class especially, uh, which is why we encourage you to get involved. In it. We have like 13, 14 Sunday school classes you can be involved in. If, if you're involved in a Sunday school class and, and there's a, a, a surgery or a long uh, time of recovery, a lot of times there'll be like a, a food train come in there. All Sunday school classes don't do it, but some of you do it. Some of you give a, a little gift card or whatever uh, for food. And so there's just to show others that we, we care. Um, we have a lady of ours sitting tonight with, with one of our ladies. And uh, she's very, Miss Rose Gibson's very sick tonight. If you'll pray for her. She's up in her 90s as well. Uh, so from time to time, we'll do things for others that are hurting in one way or another. And uh, I, I think personally we should support each other's businesses. Those of us who are, uh, those of you, uh, not me, but those of you who are um, maybe uh, uh, in business or whatever. First uh, uh, John three seventeen says, But whosoever hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? And so you and I need to understand, we need to care for each other. Now let me just, let me just caution you right here. We're living in a generation that's, that's rapidly closing itself off from society. And I get that. I understand that. You know, even in our door knocking, um, you know, you have to knock on a lot of doors to get somebody to answer the door. And I get that. I understand that. But you and I, as far as the family of God is concerned, we should be available as much as possible to help other people. I don't know how many phone calls I made just checking on people today because I can't get to all of them. Uh, and we have people right now that have loved ones that's passed away. Now, all of you know, if you've, if you've been saved very long, all of you know the way it used to be. The way it used to be, if a loved one passed, would pass away, you couldn't hold all the cakes and pies and casseroles. People today don't even hardly know what a casserole is. You, you used not to be able to even join a church unless you had an 8 by 17 casserole dish. And, I, I, and a Corel ware or whatever it is, a bacon dish. I, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, you all, you all know how it used to be. This new generation, good luck, buddy. And uh, we need to do what we can about that. Now, again, we miss. We're not perfect. I'm just saying we should care for one another. Number three, uh, now I'm going to have you turn back. After, after this, I'll keep us in order. But take your Bibles, please, and turn back to Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, if you would, and one verse there, Romans chapter 12, verse 10. And uh, a little Bible study here tonight, very little. Romans chapter 12, look at verse number 10. Let me give you that. Here's the phrase shows up again, one another, in verse number 10. <clears throat> verse 10, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor. Watch, here's the phrase, preferring one another, preferring one another. Um, here the idea is we show deference. It means by right you could have your way, but you defer that uh, to that whom you're, you desire to, to be a blessing to. And you do that because you love them. Old Testament uh, illustration, Abraham and Lot. Um, Abraham looked up and he saw the whole plain of Jordan. And uh, Abraham took the leftovers and he allowed... Lot, who, by the way, was a spoiled brat, but that's another message, uh, take uh, what, what, uh, what he wanted. And Abraham was blessed with the leftovers in a wonderful way. And so I'm just saying that he uh, offered deference or he deferred. Um, some of you, I'm going to date myself here now, but some of you remember years ago, a little cartoon where there's two chipmunks. And that one chipmunk, he'd say, no, you go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. How many of y'all remember the chipmunks? Okay, I dated myself. And that night, you know, I'm not speaking in tongues. One day, little Johnny, who didn't have much, was sitting in class. And the teacher said, gave him a math equation. He said, Johnny, if you had the last pie in the world and you had to feed yourself, your daddy, and your mama, and your sister. How many times would you slice that pie? He said, three. And she said, three? He said, oh yeah, I'd slice it three. And the teacher said, 
well, that wouldn't leave you with anything. He said, oh, yeah. My mama would say she didn't want any. <laughs> and we'd all three get a big piece. How many of y'all had a mama like that? And uh, that's called deference, preferring one another. How many of you say, I think I could, I could do that? I could do that. Okay, let's start this Sunday when this thing fills up in here and maybe give somebody a seat. Okay, moving right along. Number four. Number four. That didn't go very far, did it? All right, now, let's move on. Hebrews. See if you can find Hebrews in your Bible. Hebrews uh, chapter number three. I could have put these up there, but I didn't have time to do it. So Hebrews chapter three and verse number 13. In Hebrews 3, verse number 13. Hebrews, James, you got Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, turn back. Hebrews chapter number 3, look at verse number 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. Oh, wait a minute. That's not the verse. See there? Oh, there it is. Yeah, exhort one another. I skipped right over it. That's my. But exhort one another. Thank you. Was that my staff Italian that told me that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> but exhort one another daily while it is, it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. The idea there is to exhort one another. In other words, don't wait. Do it today. The word exhort means to run alongside, pick them up, encourage them. I always have a good word to say for somebody. Uh, the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up, stir up anger. And uh, we ought to be on the building crew and not the tearing down crew. How many watched as they tore down the other house over here the other day? They just tore it down just like, I mean, it took months probably to build that house and they tore it down in about an hour. And uh, we can do that with our words. We should be doing the opposite. We should be exhorting or encouraging one another. I have a dear pastor friend. Um, he always looked at your tie. He always had something to say about your tie. And then he would turn around to see where it came from. Mine usually came from Kmart. And uh, this one, I don't know. But anyhow, but he always always say something nice about your tie. And you know, we, we ought to look for good things we can say about each other. Uh, maybe, maybe someone's car they drive or whatever. But... Um, <clears throat> We should encourage each other, especially when we know they're down, wrong side, pick them up, tell them they did a great job. And then number five, write this one down, James chapter five. Let's just turn it over now. We're going to get, it's going to get real easy now. James chapter five, verse number 16. James chapter five, uh, verse number 16. There's two here, let me mention, if I could. In James chapter five, verse 16, it says... Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So here's something we can do for each other. We can, um, we can confess our faults. Confess your faults one to another. Notice the phrase. Not pick on the other person and pull out their faults, but confess your faults uh, to the other person. Uh, let me illustrate. Let's say um, I held you over too long in the morning service or in a service, which by the way, you can't say that hardly ever, but sometimes I do. And you go out and you get in your car and you just just say, the preacher should have shut her down a long time ago. We're going to be late for a da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And you have Rose preacher. Um, or maybe something else has, has, has upset you, whatever it is. But... Um, uh, that, that fault was mine, and if, if that was the case, then I would say, well, you know, I, I, was, I should be the one to confess my fault to you. Now, we should be careful how we handle these things. Everybody, there's, there are no perfect people in here. Could somebody say man right there? And so whenever there's a fault made, it's up to that person to confess their fault or apologize their fault to you. It's not up to you to go tell everybody about that fault. Has everybody got that? Confess your faults one to another. And then it says pray for each other. Write that one down, please. 
in chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 16, it says we should pray one for another. And uh, isn't that what we did tonight? We let, read a, a litany of uh, prayer requests um, that we prayed for each other. And I trust while someone was praying here that you were praying there, that you'll take that prayer list home and you'll pray for those dear folks. Um, so we understand that we should be praying one for another. Pray that good things will happen to them. Pray that maybe they'll get a good job. Pray their relationship is, is good. Um, pray that, um, just, just, just pray they'll be faithful. If you find somebody that you feel kind of hit and miss in church, begin to pray for them. I do that whenever I notice. I don't always get everybody. Uh, if, to tell you the truth, if, if you're not on a Sunday school role, I can't track you at all. And uh, so maybe sometimes I'll kind of look around and see who's here, who's not here. But, but, you know, when you see somebody being unfaithful, you should begin to pray for them. I pray for you, and I trust that you would be praying for other people as well. So these are at least six things that we can do for one another. Now, let me just kind of run down. You're not going to get all these. They're not going to be on the screen. But there, there are other places in the Scripture where it says, I want to do these very quickly now, we should receive one another, Romans 5, 7. Uh, receive one another. In other words, we should be uh, we should be receptive. We should, in other words, no clicks. Everybody's everybody's in the family of God. There's no upper echelon, lower echelon. Everybody's on level ground. But we should we should receive one another. Romans 15:7. We should edify one another. A little different from encouraging, but edifying one another means build them up, build them up, and uh, edify them. We should bear one another's burdens. Galatians 6. One through five, and in other words, uh, in that section of scripture, we help restore the fallen brother, lest you be tempted also. So we should bear one another's burdens. Somebody's got a heavy load, you should help help them carry that load. We should serve one another. Galatians five thirteen. No one person has any preeminence. We're all servants, and so we should serve one another. We should forgive one another. Uh, Ephesians four thirty two. Uh, forgive. Uh, their uh, uh, trespass against you in order to get your prayers answered. And there are many, many others. I'm simply saying that you and I, as a family of God, should get along. Now, in your marriage and in your home, you should be doing the same thing. In your marriage, you should be edifying each other. In your marriage, you should be building each other up, encouraging each other. You should be praying for one another. Same way in the home. If you don't have a, a, a devotional time with your family or some particular family altar time, uh, who knows who's praying for who, who's encouraging who. But these are, these are principles that can be exercised in the home as well. I would tell you this, that in the church alone, if we follow these rules, it will be a sweet place to come to. If we follow these rules in the home, our kids will have a sweet home. If we follow these, these rules, we'll see folks saved. We'll have a, a confirmation that the Spirit of God is moving in our church. If we do these things, we'll attack Christians from maybe uh, cold churches uh, or maybe churches that aren't preaching the truth, that we'll see them be part of our ministry. If we'll do these things, we'll go grow closer and, and together. And God, that's God's plan for His work. Jesus said... By this shall all men know you're my, you're my disciples, if you have love one for another. I will tell you that as a boy growing up, my mom and dad always kept us in church. Always kept us in church. And we were only in, I guess, I'm just thinking right here, maybe I'm an unusual person, but I've only been in three churches. Um, the church dad helped build uh, and then the church, when we moved into town, down uh, there at the Baptist Temple, I ended up pastoring that church, becoming the pastor there, and then this church. But I would tell you that every church I've ever been in, uh, it always just seemed like it was part of our family. I can, I can tell you all three churches, I just felt like my mom and dad, the way they functioned in the home was we had family, brothers and sisters and grandmas and grandpas, but our church family was part of our family in every church I was ever in. And I have done my best over these almost 25 years now as your pastor. I've done my best to try to make this a family where we all get along. We don't run ahead of each other. We just try to run together and get along. 
we literally do things around here just for you to have some enjoyment. Our tent meeting, that's the craziest thing in the world. We go out there where it's hot, when we got air conditioned, and do what we do before church, do what we do after church, we have our tent meeting. We do that to have fun, to enjoy our harvest festival. If you can't have fun at our harvest festival, I sat in a lawn chair by my truck and gave out candy and had a blast. I talked to everybody. I don't, have, I don't know who I talked to. I probably talked to people who escaped prison. I don't know. I, had, I just had, I, I could tell it's getting old. I sat in a lawn chair for four hours. That was pretty good. I'm just saying, we intentionally do things just to have fun. Ball games, little leagues, whatever you all, you ladies do whenever you get together over there in those ladies' meetings. I went in there one time. My wife, they had, they had big old wooden boards down one side and the other had meat and cheese all over it. I just want, I'm, I'm a man. I just wanted to get right down the end, just plow through that thing. I mean, that it looked fun to me. We have our sportsman's day, sportsman's time with Brother Chad and his family. We just have a blast. We do some things around here just because we're family and have some enjoyment. I don't know about you, but I like that real well. I don't want us to get snooty. I want us to be the family of God. And I want you to pray as we move into 2024, as you look at your calendar and you consider some of the things that we'll be doing as a church family, that you'll be here. Patriotic Sunday. I mean, if you love America, the best place in the world to be is at Franklin Road Baptist Church on Patriotic Sunday. You talk about waving the red, white, and blue. I love it. May God help us to do our best to love one another. Let's stand together.